everybody. Welcome back to the Smut Nut Reviews. Hi all Smut Lovers. Um, if you're out there and you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome to my channel. Um, that means that you are probably uh, what I like to call a literary pervert. You are a book whore, a book slut, whatever you want to call yourself. A bibliophile, such as myself. And you love all things dirty. You read erotica, you read smut, you read book porn. It's all wonderful and you're welcome. This is a safe place for you. I'm kidding. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> no. Welcome to my channel if this is the first time that you're tuning in. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you are returning for all of my smut loving uh, viewers, welcome back. Um, so this is the second video that I'm making today. So I'm not going to really do too much of a... Um, a preview or you know too much of a uh, intro on what I've been doing if you are interested in what I've been up to with my own writing with my own work and just everything that's happening with me and if you are I thank you for the interest that you have um, but watch the video before this <laughs> um, this video is I don't know I just felt like making a second video sometimes you have a second wind um, or you're just in a really good mood so I'm going to be doing two videos today this is video number two um, and hopefully I can have them both uploaded before the end of the night, uh, cause it's about, ooh, 8 o'clock right now. <laughs> uh, so this book, um, we're just gonna jump right into it. And please, don't judge me, um, I know I got my bonnet on, like, sister had to do some hair care maintenance, um, <laughs> and, uh, my book that I'm going to be showing you, it's very tattered, but that just means that it's well-loved, um, because I've read it quite a few times. <laughs> Um, so this is going to be a series by one of my favorite authors ever, Shayla Black. Um, it also is by one of her, uh, most frequent co-authors, Lexi Blake. Uh, now to be 100% honest, I've never read an individual Lexi Blake book. And for all Lexi Blake fans out there, please don't shoot me. I know she's got a lot. Um, I've never read one of her books. <laughs> And I know she writes along the same lines as Shayla, like they have a very uh, similar genre that they write in. I just, I don't know, I've never had the, not even say I haven't had the time or the inclination, I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, so if anybody has read like a great Lexi Blake book, um, and I know that she's got a huge amount of fans and a huge following, please uh, give me a recommendation on where to start, because I know she's got a lot, um, she's got a whole catalog of work and sometimes when I'm looking at an author I just get intimidated by the amount of books that they have because I can't really see where I'm gonna start to just start at the very beginning or maybe there's a specific book that should spark my interest I don't really know um, but if anybody has any recommendations I would totally and 100% be open to it uh, to where to start with a Lexi Blake book um, or reading Lexi Blake's work um, but this book is by Shayla Black and Lexi Blake. Um, for those of you who were watching me about a year or two ago, you know that I started the uh, Wicked Lover series on Shayla Black. If you have not heard about it, um, if you are not aware of who she is, uh, I believe I did a review of like the first six or seven books in that series. Um, and they are available. <laughs> so you can go back and view the previous reviews that I did on all of those books. Um, love Shayla Black. And I am going to pick up, for those of you who were following me then and you saw me uh, go through the, the motions and do the reviews with Shayla uh, Black's Wicked Lover series, I promise I will continue it. I will pick it up. I will finish it because there have been several more additions uh, to the series since then. I am not going to just drop it. I will be picking it up one day um, and I will be finishing it off. Not certain when. Um, right now, I'm just, you know, taking it one day at a time, one week at a time, one book at a time. Just so happens this week, it's going to be two books. <laughs> so let me jump right into it. The book that I'll be reviewing is actually the first book in another series. Um, it is the Perfect Gentleman series by Shayla Black and Lexi Blake. So this is the book. Shayla Black and Lexi Blake, uh, The Perfect Gentleman first book is called Scandal Never Sleeps. This series, let me say this now. This series is so fucking good. So 
fucking good. And I do not use those words lightly. It is so good. It's so satisfying. It's so juicy. Everything about this fucking series just hits all the right notes with me. So let's jump right into this bitch. It's, for lack of a better term, this is a fucking conspiracy theory book. I promise you, I die every time I pick up one of these books. Because it's so good. Oh my god. It's so satisfying. So we're going to get right into it. This book, or this series, it's about five guys. The perfect gentleman. And that is what they've been aptly named. They come from all walks of life. Some of them very similar, some of them not so similar. But they all met at boarding school. Creighton Academy. And somehow, um, because who, what, two out of, th or three out of five of them were... You know, trust fund kids. Their parents were rich and famous or powerful and famous. Um, or just powerful all around. These guys kind of became famous as a result. And as they got older, that fame definitely followed them around. Um, and they've become notorious. Let's say that. They've become notorious. Um, for a lot of things, but at the end of the day, they're best friends. And this book is about a group of guys who are best friends and how their lives suddenly take this very weird turn down the rabbit hole. Um, so we have Maddox, we have Zach, Roman. Uh, we have Gabe, Connor, and Dax. So it's six of them. I'm sorry, I said five. Um, the book starts off kind of on a side note. The series starts off kind of on a side note. Um, Maddox, who is the wild man of the bunch. Maddox is dead. He died. And I'm not even going to get into the whole issue of uh, is Maddox really dead? Because right now we are in July... Are we in July? Yeah, we're in July of 2017. Uh, so this book was released... Ooh, what's the uh, copyright on this book? Uh, this book was released in 2015. So it's been two years since this book came out. Um, I got the book as soon as it came out. <laughs> but um, now in 2017, there's this huge theory amongst the fans of the books that Maddox may not be dead. But you can draw that conclusion for yourself. Um, but just going based on what's in the book, the book starts off on a kind of sad note. Maddox is dead. Um, and it's very strange because Maddox and Gabe are kind of estranged. Uh, so while there's six of these guys, and they're all best friends, I mean, you generally have a tendency to be closer to certain people than you're not. Um, Maddox and Gabe are the closest, are, are they're closer to each other, um, or were, until... Maddox did something that Gabe says is, you know, unforgivable. Maddox is a wild man. He is the equivalent of, like, ecstasy. <laughs> the drug. He's just un... He's untamed. And he doesn't really care, which I thought... I found that, ever, you know, that, that effortlessly effervescent and charming. Um, but... Maddox and Gabe have this huge blowout about Gabe's sister. Um, Maddox dated her and then dumped her. And Gabe was kind of hoping that Maddox had grown out of that shit. Because they've all been notorious. You know, they've had their, their past dragged through the mud. Um, they know they all kind of have this man whore um, persona. But they try not to live up to it any longer. Um... Except for Maddox. He's definitely all about it. But they've all grown up. Um, they've all grown. They have all succeeded. Uh, Gabe, he runs a very successful, or he runs his family's uh, aeronautics firm. He builds airplanes. Maddox is a billionaire in and, own, in and of his own right. Um, we have Roman and Zach, who are very close to each other. Um, specifically so because Zach is the president of the United States. I was floored when I read that. I said, okay, so we're reading a story where the president is involved. 
So we have Gabe, billionaire, Maddox, billionaire, Roman and Zach, who both work in the White House, with Zach being the president of these United States, and Roman being his right and left hand man. Um, and then we have Connor and Dax. Dax is in the Navy. He is, what, like a general or a lieutenant? He's like super loved, got a great, you know, comes from a great lineage. Um, so of course he's in the public eye. And then there's Connor. Connor is the odd man out. He doesn't come from money. He doesn't come from anything like that. He's actually, you know, he was raised by a really shitty parent. He doesn't, you know, he knew who his dad was, but his dad was a senator who disowned his mom and him because she was in an affair. It was just a really nasty series of events uh, with Connor. But Connor is a spy. He is the fucking spy. He is amazing. He is the boogeyman. And he gets shit done. <laughs> so I like it. Um, but all of these gentlemen come together to honor their friend um, who passed away in a plane crash. Which is very strange because Maddox knew how to fly. Um, he knew how to fly very well. So they're like, how did Maddox die in a plane crash? Um, but they come together to mourn him and to... Um, to get over it. And it's a huge, ridiculous event full of pomp and circumstance. And Maddox has arranged his funeral <laughs> in the most obscene and absurd way. Um, but they're there. Even Zach shows up. He doesn't come in... You know, he's not there in the public eye because he's the president and the president can't really be personally associated with I guess someone of Maddox's character but everybody knows they're friends he just you know tries to keep his distance a little bit he's a he's the leader of the free world of course but he's there and they go to a bar and they celebrate their friend and while they're at this bar they see this lovely lady because do not get it twisted while this is a great novel it's wonderful it is a mystery it is a thriller it's a lot of things also as per always this is a great love story with great uh intimate sex scenes <laughs> so the story of course starts off we have to have a main character and the main character in this particular book scandal never sleeps is gabe gabe and his love interest everly everly is also at Maddox's funeral. Everly is there and she is mourning Maddox as a boss, as a friend. Um, she's shocked. He kind of picked her out of obscurity and changed her life. Um, she used to be a hacker, um, got in a little bit of trouble, but he just picked her out of nowhere, made her one of the executives in his company, one of the, gave her a really important job within his company and befriended her and she doesn't know why but she feels a little lost. She feels her mentor is gone and so she goes uh, to the, I guess, the repass or the, you know, there's not a, there's not a organized repass. Everybody just goes to a bar down the street. Um, and she's there with her friends. Um, Gabe and his friends are there, but they're in a back room. Of course they have to be in a back room. The president's there, so the president can't just be hanging around. <laughs> but Gabe sees Everly, and he immediately has designs on her. And she decides that she has designs on him, too. Um, and so they go and spend a weekend together in a hotel. Um, and they, you know, what's the word? They... For lack of a better term, they shack up for the weekend. They are like literally, they can't keep their hands off each other. And it's great. And you know, one of those things that people tend to do when you have a death, you want to feel alive again. And you want to kind of put all of the, the ugliness behind you. He's looking to escape, she's looking to escape. The odd thing is they don't know that they're looking to escape from the same thing. They go to the bar, but neither of them is, you know, really aware that they are looking to escape from the same shit 
uh, the same pain of losing Maddox. They don't talk about it. Um, when Monday comes around, because I believe, you know, the funeral was probably on a Friday or something like that. So they spend Friday, Saturday, and Sunday locked up together, making love the whole time, getting to know each other, really growing attached to each other. And what would have started out as a one-night stand kind of feels like it's blossoming into something else. Um, but they have to go. They have to part. She's got to go to work. And he, though him and Maddox were not on the best terms, has inherited Maddox's company. So he's got to report to Maddox's building and see what's going on and see if he can make the best of it. The truth of the matter is he's not, he has no intention of keeping the company. He's going to give it to his sister. Uh, the woman that Maddox swore he loved and then dumped. And the reason he's going to give it to his sister is because his sister's pregnant with Maddox's baby and nobody knows it. Um, or very few people know it. Um, Gabe is also a little pissed off because he finds out that there's this rumor that Maddox was sleeping with a woman at the company. Um, and he feels like this is the woman that broke his sister and Maddox up. That Maddox couldn't keep it in his pants long enough. And, of course, he reverted back to the same old immature ways. And so, he's looking to find this woman and fire her ass. Um, here's where things get a little tricky. Everly is that woman. That's what he thinks. He hears about her, and he she doesn't tell him she doesn't tell him her, her real name. They decide while they're in the hotel that they're not going to, you know, get too involved. So he calls her Eve, and he they you know he just the two and two don't come together until it's too late. And when it's too late is when she comes to work prepared to meet her new boss and he comes to work prepared to fire the woman that broke up his sister's happy home. And they look each other in the face. And he's like disgusted. And he's actually kind of an asshole. Let's be real. Gabe is kind of a dick because he accuses her of a lot of nasty things and says some really horrible shit to Everly about how she planned this and oh you were sleeping with one boss and you thought you'd sleep your way with the other boss. It's really nasty. Um, but before he has the opportunity to drag her ass through the dirt any further, he's actually dragged through the dirt. Gabe is arrested for Maddox's murder. And they say that Gabe is definitely a person of interest um, because there's a video that popped up of Gabe basically telling Maddox he was going to kill him. And I, of course, you know, it's out of context, but Maddox, you know, was kind of a dick and Gabe is pissed off. Um, they had a meeting about a month before Maddox died um, where Gabe tore into him about what he did to his sister, which is right. You dated my sister. I told you to leave her alone. I told her to leave you alone, but you two decided to get together, and then you dumped her and broke her heart, and I'm her big brother, so yeah, I kind of have to rip you a new one, even though you're my best friend, but in the process, um, Maddox reveals some things that will come to make more sense later, um, what happens after Gabe is arrested is a series of very strange events where they start to put together the fact that it's very possible Maddox was not, he didn't die, but he was killed. Someone murdered Maddox and they're trying to figure out who, why, what was he into. Um, Everly goes with Gabe to Maddox's apartment. They find these receipts and these pictures. Uh, they find a lot of things that don't make a whole lot of sense. Um, and while they're there, someone tries to burn the house down with them in it. Um, and they barely make it out alive. Um, but they start to put two and two together that something is not right. And they start to get the idea that Maddox was involved or had stumbled upon something that was much bigger than what he could have ever imagined. Um, throughout the course of this, Gabe and Everly are still trying to figure out their relationship. She, it's almost like every time she opens herself up to him, she ends up getting clobbered. Gabe is horrible because in his head... He is sleeping with a woman who slept with his best friend, who broke up his relationship with his sister, 
it's just a really nasty piece of work. But he's so obsessed with her, he can't just let her go. Um, and every time that Everly opens herself up to possibly trusting him, he says something that, you know, is really nasty or hurts her or does something that's completely counter counterproductive to everything he's saying. It's just a lot of back and forth, which I wasn't necessarily a fan of because Gabe comes off as a pretty abusive kind of a dick. Um, in this book, no lies, no, 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 uh, two ways about it. He comes off kind of as a prick. Um, very says one thing, does another. And Everly is the one that's always getting clobbered for it. I feel bad for her. Um, but she does stick up for herself. She does stick to her guns and tells him, you know, screw yourself. I don't care who you are. Um, and he's so wrapped up in the idea that she was sleeping with Maddox. And she's like, I don't know how many times I have to tell you, I never slept with him. And even if I did, it's not your business. Um, so I really like that about her character. Um, as they delve deeper into this kind of like rabbit hole, like I said, they just stumble upon it. There's something going on. There's something happening with Russians and with someone named Sergei. And the Sergei, whoever Sergei is, is at the root of all of this. Um, when they finally kind of come to a conclusion um, that this is bigger than they all considered or even thought, it's almost too late. They have dug themselves into this hole that they can't get out of. Um, and all parties involved, they're really just adamant to find out what happened to their friend. Because at the end of the day, that's what starts this. That's what brings them down this path. They want to know what happened to their friend. Because the report that came out is that Maddox died in a plane crash. And then there's a report that it was an explosion and they start to implicate Gabe. But later on, that is completely wiped away. But Maddox is still dead. So what happened to my friend? And they start to figure out Maddox was flying to Washington, D.C. to go see Zach. Why? There are all these questions that populate in this book. And Everly is contacted by someone who's basically telling her this is bigger, this is more in depth than you could possibly know, but I trust you. So I'm going to give you this, it's kind of like her own deep throat. Um, and he leads her down a path uh, to another connection, another link in the chain, another link in the storyboard. And I don't want to give too much away because this book is so detailed but it's a great novel it's a great thriller um it's a great romance well uh, I'm gonna be honest it's not a great romance but it's a realistic romance it's how people redeem themselves and that is what I loved about this book the romance is not great it's not all hearts and flowers Gabe is not the perfect guy he doesn't say the perfect things he says a lot of really horrible things and he hurts her a lot but that desire to be together and get through is there um in terms of the storyline itself in this kind of book it could have gone haywire and i'll never know how she does it shayla black has this way of taking something that could be so complex and could be so messy and making it seem so effortlessly neat and perfect even me as i talk about this book i find myself saying oh my god i'm not doing this book any justice whatsoever but it's actually really well put together well thought out very well executed i just amazing um how it draws you in and you want to know what happened you find yourself saying, what happened? So what is the answer to the question? How did this happen? How did Max die? Who's doing this? I'm not going to go very much further with this review. Um, I will say that if no other series deserves a movie or a book, <laughs> this one definitely does. I would encourage anyone who is looking for something that's unique. This could be the next fucking Scandal. Like, everybody knows Scandal, the TV show. It's great. We love it. Carrie, Carrie Washington, Tony Goldsmith, you know, we love it. 
this could be the next scandal, but better.